What's going on, everybody? This is Coach Ty here with Project Pure Athlete. They call me the jump guy. Well, because I eat, sleep, live, and breathe jumping. I was a former professional show dunker and a longtime track and field athlete and moved my way into the coaching ranks about 16 years ago, right alongside my um, my career as a pro dunker. And what I wanted to do was take the opportunity here to go through this phenomenal dunk by Connor Barth and illustrate the Project Pure Athlete principles of jump technique. These principles are being taught all over the world. They're being utilized by thousands of coaches and athletes, and they were pioneered by yours truly, myself, um, some years back. And these terms, these cues will really help an athlete to optimize their ability to jump their highest. That's the key. That's what we're taking a look at today is how do I get my body to leave the ground and jump the highest it possibly can? What we're going to see here is Connor utilizing a lob. So he's thrown the ball up and as he accelerates towards his takeoff, you're going to notice that he has a consistent acceleration. Let's watch this. There we go. He's accelerating through his jump. Acceleration is a very key component of any good jump, but more importantly is how smooth and connected that acceleration is, stride to stride and contact to contact. And what you'll notice is Connor does a phenomenal job of as he accelerates, he does not have any disconnect that causes competing forces. So he's accelerating very smoothly through his jump. And what you'll notice is that his head and his neck is very neutral. We're not getting too many competing movements here. We're not getting him looking violently up or down. Even the, the most subtle um, of movements can really affect how efficient a jump is. And that's what we're finding um, amongst the athletes that we've worked with over the years is that the athletes athletes that remain the quietest yet aggressive in, in a very controlled manner, very similar to that of, say, a an Olympic sprinter. When you watch an Olympic sprinter, you know you can watch their face. It's relaxed. The shoulders are relaxed. The, the mouth and everything is quiet in the head because in order to exhibit the upper echelons of our power output, what we need to ensure is that we are not causing any disturbances um, on, on our end on purpose. And a lot of that has to do with just controlling the breathing and not trying to outflex or out muscle the movement. And this is what Connor's doing a very good job of is just staying nice and relaxed. This contact point right here through his left foot is our setup um, into what's called our penultimate stride. You may have heard of the term penultimate. It was you know, categorized a long time ago within the world of track and field as really being the second last stride. Um, penultimate really means second last. You can use it in many different contexts. Like the penultimate chapter of a book is the second last chapter in that book. And as Connor transitions through that foot, you're going to notice that he lowers just slightly into that hip in order for him to initiate what we call our push, and our push is a very aggressive movement where Connor is trying to cover much more distance, and this uh, penultimate stride serves a couple purposes. One, it's going to help to, again, create, accentuate all that beautiful acceleration from early on in his jump, and number two is it's going to help to lower his hip. As we watch here, you'll see even from when I started that arrow, as he transitions into this right foot here, his hip has lowered, and it will continue to lower into that right foot. We'll rewind just a moment here. We also want to notice that as we push, you'll see that Connor sends the arms back. So his right arm is shot back into what we call a pendulum style arm swing. So that one goes straight back. And his right arm actually heads out to the side and performs a cyclical motion. So we have what's called a hybrid arm swing here. One side we have this beautiful pendulum style that has kind of more of a, um, a benefit to the stretch shortening cycle on the front of our shoulder, which really means that as we lengthen these tissues in here, as Connor stretches the, the front of the chest and shoulder, we get kind of this reflexory, um, or reflexive, I should say, um, uh, motion that happens within these soft tissues that causes this arm to rocket back with additional uh, kinetic energy that really helps us through our takeoff. And that left arm over there, we can't really rotate the video, unfortunately, but what you'll see is that as we transition through, it's very cyclical up 
spin around in almost like a flapping motion. And that flapping motion really helps him to time. Not that it, you can utilize like a, bi, a bilateral pendulum, which is both arms go straight back. But that left arm heading out to the side rotates around and helps him connect with that last contact. And we're going to kind of get into that as we move forward here. But we just wanted to note that as he pushes, the cue is push through the penultimate and send the arms. As he pushes, he sends the arm into that back position so that his arm swing is timed beautifully with the last two contact points, which we call our plant sequence. And we all have a, a distinct default that if we were asked, if I said, hey, give me your highest jump, we're all likely going to pick a, a certain arrangement of these last two steps. Connor is a right left plant sequence and that right left plant sequence um, is utilized very uh, predominantly amongst leapers of two feet uh, specifically in the volleyball world right-handed athletes typically have a right left plant sequence but we have many jumpers in both worlds that jump with alternate plant sequences and it's a determined largely upon our, our kind of our more dominant side typically is our first of the two contacts, our plant foot. Plant equals power. And what we're looking for here is really to accept all of this speed, this horizontal acceleration into this right leg. We get some forces, some eccentric forces where these mu the, the muscle fibers are lengthening through a lot of this right leg here, which helps to one is to slightly decelerate the athlete. But more importantly, is we're going to start storing and what we call amortizing this power within the limbs so that as he transitions through to this last contact called our block, I just want you to remember block equals break. He puts on these breaks. So we have all of this speed. The right foot has kind of helped us to store all of this energy. This last foot, its responsibility is breaks, creates a really sharp return force back into the hip and creates this beautiful triangular kind of shape of the lower body and that stable triangular shape is the base of the platform for takeoff. So we have speed plus power plus a break helps us to create the most optimal conditions for verticality and peak vertical. And you'll see as Connor transitions through this stride to get that nice sharp break we call this last stride our block. We want to punch this stride punch the block. It creates the behavior behind the movement and the behavior is the most crucial element to that jump. Behaviors are what an athlete can manage on the fly. What an athlete cannot manage on the fly are angles and thinking about too many details. So Connor is thinking accelerate, push, he gets his plant and then he thinks punch and that helps to create a very deliberate breaking mechanism, a deliberate block, that left foot comes down. You'll notice that as that left foot hits, his arms are striking down the same angle as his foot. And this, would, this helps create additional force into the ground, which from um, physics we know is that with every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if we can create some extra downward force into the ground, this, this earth loves us in combination with this beautiful subfloor of this basketball court, you're going to get a lot of return energy. And if you can sustain it, which Connor is, as you can see here, I'm not going to show off. He'll, he'll be happy we showed off his quad game, but he can withstand a lot of these forces through uh, progressive training. So really what we see here is um, a beautiful marriage of the strength and power of this athlete, this synchronization of technique through the contact points, and a transition into this beautiful between the legs or East Bay dunk. Guys, that's it for today. This is our first breakdown of our breakdown series. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up, thumbs up button hit the subscribe button, and make sure to check out all the cool videos we have here at Project Pure Athlete. We're rooted in education, and I can't wait to share more of it with you. This is Tyler Ray. They call me the Jump Guy, and we'll see you in the next one.